Hi there, Janet Fritz here for Galaxy Girl Creations. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to a little bit of something different today. So um, I am participating in the CSI challenge for this month. And uh, this is the 10th anniversary. And so it's a birthday celebration. This is our inspiration piece in the first column there is what they call the scene and so that's got all the colors and everything then the evidence which is a suggestions of different things to use on your layout testimony is uh, different writing styles or um, prompts or topics that you might choose to use and then the third column is the RGB codes for the colors now my printer did not print out properly and so the aqua that you see here is correct, and when I hold up the paper in my hand here, the blue is not correct. It should be more aqua than that, and so it is closer to what the mermaids and the unicorn have there. Now those um, unicorns and mermaids are from Creative Fabrica. I printed them out. I just dropped the images into PowerPoint, uh, put them on an 8.5 by 11 page. I printed them on my Canon Pro 100 so that they did print the proper color. Um, the other paper was printed on my brother printer, just uh, my day-to-day -day black and white printer, but the blue didn't print out right. So um, these are some papers that I thought I might use, and I don't end up using the striped one at all. I do use this one, but not at all like I thought I was. I thought I might use those two three by four cards, and I thought I might use this number three or the one in the bottom corner, but I don't end up using either of those either. So I am going to use that floral paper from SEI as my background paper. And then I am using this stamp set, which is new um, to me. Uh, it, I think it's been around for a little bit, but um, it's new. I got it for Christmas, and it's the Ellie Studio Star Jane Al Star Jane? Yeah, Star Jane um, Alphabet. And I really like it. And originally I uh, stamped it in Aquatini from Catherine Pooler. And now I am re-stamping it in Fiesta Blue, which is closer to what uh, I really wanted it to be. The Aquatini was a little bit more turquoise. And now I know that blue doesn't look like it goes with the mermaids, um, but it does. <laughs> when all is said and done, it, it, it matches fine. And the green, the Aquatini was just a little bit too green. So I do fussy cut those out, and that is going to be part of my title. My title would be Happy Birthday Moments. The three photos are of my niece's daughter, and um, she is opening birthday presents. And uh, in the, the gift that she is receiving is a gift that uh, my husband and I bought her. It is a unicorn sleeping bag, and it's super fuzzy. It's pink and aqua and purple, and she absolutely loved it. In fact, she sat in it for quite a while and wanted to open the rest of her presents while she was sitting in it. Um, so now I am looking for the proper pink color to use to stamp happy and moments to complete my title. I just want to get the placement of that down before I figure out a whole bunch of other stuff that is going to be on this layout. So I played with a different, a couple of different colors. Um, I even pulled out one of the oxide inks, and I finally end up using the pink champagne stamp or ink pad from Catherine Pooler, and I have those in the minis. And so those are what end up going on the page. They match the best, and I really like the way that they look when it's all said and done. I did fussy cut out by hand the word uh, birthday, and then you can see that... Um, or what looks like a pen with an orange lid and an orange um, tip on it. That is actually, uh, it's called a slice. I think it's called a slice. Yeah, slice. And it is a um, blade, like a, like, a, like a pen blade, but it's not a pen blade. It's also got a ceramic tip, so it doesn't really, you can't cut yourself as easily on it. But um, it works very well. I just am not that great with those types of blades to begin with. So, um I'm always looking for something that works well. <laughs> so that's what I end up using. I do end up cutting a strip of this pink paper. This is also from Ellie's studio. Um, I thought I was going to try and use those three by four cards, but I don't end up doing that. I end up making some banner pieces to go behind this menagerie of mermaids and unicorns. And I'm going to use some of that turquoise paper or aqua blue paper from um, Lawn Fawn. And... It's interesting because the paper is like two different shades. The the I, I don't know. It wasn't really an ombre paper, so I'm not sure why it's like that, but it is. And so I just embraced it. I was like, you know what? I'm not going to like go and try and find the right shade of 
turquoise or aqua that matches either one of those two strips because it was just so very variegated it was really hard to kind of figure that out and then when I flip it over it goes to the green up in one of the corners and I didn't like that so I left it on the light blue and a little bit of a darker blue and I like the way that it's looking I'm going to use those three pieces kind of in the middle and I am going to end up inking them up with some black distress ink to make them pop a little bit and I thought I would just leave them intact but then I end up cutting them all in half so I can kind of stretch them to be as long as I want them and I'm um, it also allows me to make the the middle one longer than the two outside ones and then I'm going to put them at a little bit of an angle or at least the two outside ones and I like the way that it looks better it looks almost like a starburst but not really <laughs> so I'm just using my black soot distress ink and that's just the plain old distress ink it's not the oxide and um, I like the way that it helps everything kind of pop off the page now in the inspiration piece we do have the aqua color we have this light pink color um, almost like a ballet pink we have a corally red we have white and black and so the black is just basically the black of the inking um, and then you know the black lines of the animal the animals there I don't really add a whole bunch of black to it but um, I thought this worked well I did intend to use one of the threes off of that other piece of paper that I had held up and the black three would have worked well but then it was a little bit too big for my title and so the smaller three would have worked except that it was kind of a more of a peachy color than pink and it didn't really match well enough and so I don't end up using either one from that paper so that paper and the striped paper from my mind's eye neither one of those end up getting used so I'm liking how this is looking. I like how it's coming together. I will also have links in the description box down below for the uh, mermaid file and the um, unicorn files from Creative Fabrica, if that's something that you're interested in. And then I will also put a list of some of the things that I've used, including the stamp set um, from Ellie's Studio. Actually, the Happy and Moments portion come from the Ellie still Ellie's studio title builder volume three stamps stamp collection so also got that for Christmas so I'm trying to use some new things and I'm liking the way that it's looking so I really I really like the way that those turned out now this is an oldie but a goodie it's like one of those crimping tools you put the paper through and it corrugates it or makes it crimped and that is something that was on the list of things that you could include. And so I decided to throw this white paper through there. I'm going to ink it up and I'm going to put those behind. I'm going to put it behind the photos um, just to give it an extra layer of texture. So I think that's going to add a lot of dimension to this layout. Now I did go through the list of items in the evidence column. And some of the items I did not choose to use like solid papers or um, or uh, clocks or watch parts. So some of the things that I did use was the floral pattern, um, a, an animal, it says a rabbit or an, another animal, birthday themed elements, a cupcake or cake, gold, uh, flowers, corrugation. You could have added pleating or stenciling. Um, I do end up adding a decorative border in there at, at one point. You could add a hat, some texture paste. I don't add everything. So the idea is you're supposed to choose, um, originally you were supposed to choose three, but the challenge has changed a bit since I was on that design team. So I used to be on the design team. I guess I didn't mention that before. And uh, the reason I am doing this is because the owner of the site, Debbie, who is awesome and wonderful, she invited uh, the, the old design team members to come back to help celebrate the 10th anniversary. So I am playing along this month celebrating and I just realized how much I miss this challenge. It's so much fun. It gives you a lot of different ways to kind of look at things or um, different. It makes you think outside the box on the items that you're using. It's almost like a recipe challenge, but you don't have to use every single thing on the recipe. You get to pick and choose. And she's got more than 15 items on this list of things under the evidence area, which you know, evidence is just the way that it is set up like, um, like it's a case, like a, a crime scene or I don't know, 
I don't know if you call it a crime scene. <laughs> so basically there's a, a scene. The scene is the big cupcake that looks like it is from Alice in Wonderland. And then the evidence from it are, is the list of things that make you think of that, like the pleading and um, which would be like a cupcake wrapper or the watch piece that is on the cupcake makes you think of um, Alice in Wonderland and that kind of stuff. So there's a whole bunch of stuff in there you could choose from. And it really does help you to think outside your box. And it also makes you kind of go the extra mile because like I didn't have to add this piece of corrugated paper, but I thought, you know what, I could pull out that tool and I would add that, could add that and it will just totally add to the look of the layout and give it a little pop of something extra. So if you want to take your layouts to the next level, I would highly recommend checking out the CSI Color Stories Inspiration Facebook group because uh, she gives you, I think, two. It used to be two or three. Actually, I think there was three, three case files per month, but it may just be two now. I haven't played in quite a while, so um, I highly recommend going and checking it out because it'll give you a lot of different ways to look at it. And then when you get to the testimony area, which would be the journaling, um, you are you can write in. Uh, you can it give they give she gives you five options. My goodness, I'm stumbling all over. So you get a topic, a prompt idea, which usually has a, a hyperlink in it, so you can go to another website and get some ideas. Um, the way it's presented, like writing it on a journaling card, would be in the way in this one. Um, a writing format would be a four-line poem and the inspiration words on this particular one are celebrate ace and heart and um you know what i don't even think i include my <laughs> journaling on this for you but um i i am going to write a little bit at the bottom there um about what this birthday gift is and i will probably uh use the inspiration words like i aced I aced uh, the gift because she loved it so much and uh, it was fun celebrating with her, which is one of the words, and um, that this gift really stole her heart. So there you go. That's some journaling for you there, just made up on the spot, including the three inspiration <laughs> words. So my apologies that I didn't include it on my actual video here, but um, I hope that you enjoy this video and go check out the uh, different case files you can actually go back and look at some of the past ones as well and they are just awesome so lots of fun now back to what I was doing here I ended up pulling that little card that I just had in my hand and I hand or I fussy cut out the cake and tucked it in and then I'm going through my little color boxes of um, ephemera and stickers and I'm pulling out different things in aqua and in pink. And I found a pink cupcake. I found an aqua tag that says to and from and it has gold on it. So gold was one of the items on the list of evidence. And so I thought that was perfect. I also found this tag that says love you with a heart. I'm going to fussy cut that heart out and include it. Um, so a heart was another item that was on the list. I also found this cupcake that is a shaker sticker. So I'm going to add that to it. Um... A shaker wasn't on the list, but a cupcake was, but I've already got three. Now this will be one cake and three cupcakes that have been added, but that's okay. Um, birthday themed elements would be those balloons, uh, the cakes, any of those kind of things would be birthday themed. And of course the word birthday. So I think it all fits the case. And um, it was a lot of fun uh, going back and working with this case file. So I really, really enjoyed it. Uh, there's no sketch or anything, so you're welcome to do whatever you want for the layout, but it gives you lots of ideas of different things to try. And like I said, if you're into recipe challenges, this is a great one because there's lots of options. I am just using my liquid glue to adhere all of those pieces. Um, the items that I printed at home, I print those um, on my Canon Pro 100 with an, some Epson paper that is, it's a little bit, it's cardstock, but it's like got kind of a luster type of a uh, finish to it. So I, I kind of like the way that it came out. I'm just trying this paper for the, for the very first time on the recommendation of one of my other friends who uses it. Um, so I am trying that out. And um, you can see that I added that pink scallop border at the bottom of the photos the 
scallop border or a decorative border was also on the list of things that you could add. Um, I believe, yep, flowers were on there as well. So I've got some flowers and the, uh, so that just added to it as well. I am popping some of the items up onto some foam tape, like the top of that cake is added, uh, has foam added to the back of it. The bottom of the cake where it's tucked in does not have any foam, but the top does. So it gives a little added dimension. And same with the head of the uh, seahorse that I was just playing with there. Now I was going to add just this one balloon and then I came across this, the second balloon and thought I would add it as well. Uh, my acrylic block, in case you don't know or haven't watched my videos often, my, I use my acrylic block as my third hand to hold things down while the glue is setting while I do something else. Um, it works great because you can still see what's below it. Um, it doesn't really interfere with the layout like on the screen. And um, it it's heavy enough that it just kind of holds everything in place like I said now I was trying to hold that little pink flower in place and yeah the, there was no way because um, er, there was some things popped up on foam around it so my acrylic block was not fitting now I didn't like the strings of this ribbon or of this tag sticking out so I just put a little bit of glue behind and tucked them under again my acrylic block is helping me out there and then I had this extra balloon I thought I'll go ahead and add that as well and I really like the way that it looks. Um, I like the way that the two balloons that are completely different, um, but they look cute next to each other. They're from completely different sets. Um, but they are also little shaker pockets, which are really cute. A lot of little shakers on this one, two balloons and that cupcake. So lots of fun stuff going on. And I think this page is going to come out really nicely when it's all said and done. And then I've got these little blue starfish. I had a couple pink starfish. I'm tucking those in, bringing all of those colors into each one of the embellishment areas that I'm creating. I do have this little number three in the darker pink. It's like a, that corally red color, pinkish. Um, it's, it's really hard once you start using so many of the similar colors uh, to know which one is which. <laughs> to meet the requirement on the paper. So it did call for coral red, um, which is more like that paper down the center. But then if you go into lighter colors of it, it does get a little bit more peachy. I don't know. If you do stray from the colors, it's not a big deal. Nobody's gonna come and slap your hand for it. It's just to get your inspiration from. Um, but if you do wanna be exact, that she does provide you the RGB codes that you can look up online and get a really good idea of those colors. I'm just gonna go ahead and finish up all of the gluing of the bits and pieces here, tucking things under, uh, and again, pulling in the di different colors into the uh, all three of the embellishment areas. I say three, and it's almost like the whole page is framed by embellishment. So I don't know, I don't know what counts as three. <laughs> Maybe the title counts as one and then the upper spot counts as one. Maybe there's only two. I'm not really sure. But I do really like um, adding all of these kind of layers and tucking things in and just um, building it up so that, you know, you could leave a lot of this off, which would be absolutely fine. It would be no problem. But I feel like every once in a while when you're tucking all of this these little goodies in it really finishes the layout and makes it look really nice it's not like um it it doesn't look like anything's missing if you leave some of it off for sure but um I don't know it's kind of neat to kind of just go back and look at it and discover little bits and bobs tucked in here and there that you didn't really notice at first glance so I really like that it's kind of like a little surprise and um, it's a little bit fun so I do finish off with these uh, epoxy hearts. I guess they're epoxy. I don't even know where I got them from, but they are kind of have a shiny, shimmery finish to them. And that is pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have questions or comments, leave those down below. Um, I am really glad to be back for the beginning of the year here. Um, I had a great two weeks off and I hope that you guys are uh, ready to go for some inspiration and fun coming up for the rest of uh, the month in January. So thanks again for watching. Hit the thumbs up if you don't mind. And if you're not subscribed, do that too. See you next time. Bye.